What's going on everyone, College Lefty, and in this video, I'm gonna be quickly going over my created player stats, but I'm also gonna have a game of ranked seasons where I'm gonna be playing with a couple of the guys that I recently used, but I haven't really had too much gameplay with them. But here is uh, Pablo Sanchez. This is the power focus catcher. Definitely all around good player, and I could have uh, adjusted the contact a little bit differently with some equipment. But let's go ahead and get right into the gameplay. I think both of the creative players at Power, Focus, and Balance are amazing. So it's really your personal preference of whatever you want to go for. I went with the more arm strength rather than the fielding and overall player. But we will have Cy Young making, a, I guess I already played a debut game with him. But the opponent quit after a few innings of gameplay. So hopefully this opponent will stick around and I can get more of a review from his card and uh, use him on a harder difficulty because I am in the CS if you guys watched my last video. And uh, here I got thrown out with Francisco Lindor. He was also making his debut as well. So uh, definitely some good some good quality cards that I've recently picked up in that Lindor and uh, Willie Mays overall, uh, 87 overall in right field. And in this one we're facing Chris Sale, so another lefty to get a good glimpse of what he's capable of doing. And I, do, I did move him down in the lineup a little bit. He's batting in the seven hole, but uh, here we got Cy Young facing Carlos Gomez, and I wanted to show a good variety of pitches to start the game off. The fastball, the changeup, and then now here the sweeping curve. I did miss on the outside corner on purpose there, but I went ahead and set up the screwball. If you're able to use a variety of these pitches, you can set up a pretty good at bat right there. I was able to get the strikeout as the umpire says he went around for the swing. But uh, this, this Cy Young can be very useful on, uh, on the harder difficulties I'm thinking because he does have really good control. That home runs per nine attribute is going to be uh, essential facing some of these good teams. Once I get up to this this uh, type of gameplay, this caliber of players in this game. But here we have Trevor Story up. And I thought I got that one, but I popped up to the first baseman there. His first baseman was able to make play. Not too much action going so far. Pretty much a pitcher's duel so far through a couple of these innings. And I expect it to be. I mean, the timing windows ba bouncing back and forth from you know, Hall of Fame or Legend, whatever the difficulty is, it's gonna be a little bit challenging, but here Lindor is getting tested with the ball in the hole. Doesn't have the arm strength to uh, throw the guy out at first base. I think I'm gonna go ahead and sell that Lindor. Not that he's a bad player, I just really wanna test out a variety of cards. I wanna test out Tatis, maybe uh, the Javier Baez, and then try out another pitcher. But here we have Willie Mays up at the plate, and he's gonna rip one into right field. That's gonna be a leadoff base hit to start this inning off on a 1-0 count. Sending that into right, so I was able to steal second. He got a really good jump, and Matt Chapman is up. He's hitting one off of Chris Sale, the pitcher wall, and Chris Sale's gonna recover from that one and make the play. Unfortunate there, but I figured I, I would try to uh, hit with Cy Young the first pitch, and then hopefully the opponent will throw me a strike, and I'll try and uh, suicide squeeze with Cy Young because he does have a good bunting attribute. Unfortunately, he throws one low in the zone. I'm unable to get the bunt down. And I mean, in that situation, I'm not trying to, because I did hit the hit the base hit with Chapman and then I hit the pitcher and I got thrown out. I was looking to try and manufacture a run, but uh, there I got the Willie Mays animation in right field. He makes that play there. And he's playing in a secondary position because he is a primary center fielder, but definitely still has really good fielding out in right field. Got the, got the animation there. That was pretty cool to see. Throws the ball in, knocking his hat down. But uh, facing Chris Sale, I know it's the pitcher up, but I wanted to focus on trying to get the confidence up on, on Cy Young's uh, a variety of pitches here, going with the sweeping curve. And that was the pitch that I had uh, given up some hard contact on earlier, and a pitch that I had thrown for a few balls. So I wanted to get the confidence up using it for a strikeout. Now I have the gold bar of confidence in the third inning with two outs, going with the screwball inside, and that's a good pitch to throw to righties. And now I'm going with the 12-6 to the outside corner. And I do, do not get the strike out there. But it's definitely, uh, you can set up the breaking balls to work off of each other. They're a little bit of a different pitch variety, different pitch speed. Uh, they come in a little bit of a different timing window as well. So I, I wish he had a slider or more of a hard breaking off speed pitch rather than just a change up and then three different curve balls. But I mean, Cy Young probably will have another card and might even have a sinker involved with it or something like that. But there, I thought that ball was crushed. Probably stayed in the yard because of the home run attribute, home run per nine attribute facing his creative player. I felt like he squared that one up, but still a 0-0 game in the fifth inning. And uh, that was a hanger. Trevor Story is hitting it into center field. On this In this particular game, Trevor Story had a crazy inside edge. I know he's been kind of back and forth uh, playing up more days than, than not. 
but I think uh, now when I'm making this video, he's playing down on inside edge. So it, I think the inside edge definitely makes a, a factor in how you build your team, and certain cards are going to be a lot better when uh, they are playing up on inside edge. Like I think Trevor Story had like 80-something power, 88 power, close to 90 against righties, and then 98 versus lefties. He was one of the better shortstops as a gold. Yet uh, When I was playing this game, he was probably the best card you could go with for as in terms of budget players. And he also has a pretty good chance to go diamond. But anyway, we have Willie Mays up. Six, sixth inning, 0-0 zero, zero game. And he's going to send another base hit up the middle. Willie Mays making an impact on this one. Has two hits already. And uh, definitely fortunate to get him on base. In the last game play in his debut, I don't think I got him on base at all. But uh, this was also, I guess I wanted to include this game in his debut. But I just, it would have been too long of a video. This was a, a full game. Up one nothing. I that, As you guys can tell right there on that hit and run from Matt Chapman, I was able to score that run. And uh, some for some reason, the game was lagging at certain times in this. I don't know if it's uh, my PlayStation. I think I got to get a PlayStation Pro here pretty soon. But we have Francisco Lindor up at the plate, and I thought I got that one. It was a it was a jammed hit, but I thought I hit it a lot harder than I actually did. And then look at this play. First baseman's just punching him in the face for the out. He rounds first. The run didn't even score because Francisco Lindor rounded the base, got punched in the face, and uh, yeah. Matt Chapman did not score with 69 speed there, but... It's unfortunate I'm looking to uh, ex extend the lead. I mean, I could have had a couple opportunities. I've squared up the ball a few times, and Andrew Jones tracks that one down. Just, I mean, this guy, this opponent was definitely a good player. I felt like he could have had some runs too, but the ball is just not carrying in this one. It was a lot of Adam balls, right to people, line outs, and that happens. I mean, on the hard difficulty, you really have to square the ball up. Uh, with using, using the pitchers of this caliber, it's gonna be a lot tougher. I mean, one video, I squared up Chris Sale quite a bit, and then in this one, I couldn't even hit him, so it happens. I mean, that's the difference in uh, pitch feedback and timing windows, harder difficulties. Uh, Cy Young is dealing into the eighth inning, and look at Chris Sale like a cat, robbing me of another base hit from Matt Chapman once again. But in the bottom of the eighth inning, he does have a guy on first base in Joey Gallo. I wasn't going to attack Joey Gallo off of the bench. I wasn't going to let him t uh, beat me or tie up the game anyway. But later in this one, Francisco Lindor hitting his third hit of the game. That's going to get down as well. And that's going to be a double. This time he doesn't round the base and uh, get messed up. He, go he goes into second base safely there as the ball bounced over Steve Finley's head. Later in the inning, Pablo Sanchez hits one to center field. I was under that one. I thought I got it, but I was under it. Maybe with a balanced player, that's ball, that ball sent into the gap. But so far, so good. I really like that creative player. I definitely need to get uh, some batting gloves that have a little bit higher vision. And I can focus more on contact because he'll have about 100 power regardless because his base stat is 90. So that's really why I went with the, the power hitting catcher. I think later on when the equipment comes out, I think it's going to be easier to get the contact attribute up and usually power stats for equipment are more expensive when it comes to stubs anyway so if you have a power based player then you're going to be all right there plus the arm strength but i was able to get the strikeout the complete game shutout one nothing victory with cy young 12 strikeouts there only gave up four hits we move up to 848 rating i think what i'm going to do is include the the rest of the packs that i had in the previous video because hopefully i can get somebody good here we have 15 packs and a gold player guaranteed and so far in this one, nothing nothing really. But my pack look has been pretty good so far this year. I've pulled uh, Steven Strasburg and Chris Bryant. So hopefully I can pull another diamond here or at least a couple golds in uh, Ronald Acuna or someone like that because those golds are going for quite a bit of stubs. I know players like Cody Bellinger and Trevor Story, guys like that are going for upwards of 7,000, 5,000, 4,000 stubs. So some of those gold players are definitely worth it. I think uh, a 15 or a 20 pack bundle in this one in this game costs 30,000 stubs. So if I pull somebody good that gets me those stubs back, then I'm I'm definitely interested in doing that. So so far nothing good, nothing good so far. But I li really like these pack opening animations. It increases the the time of opening packs when you're able to kind of see if you get a diamond and then go to that reveal animation if you do if not you just reveal all of them and it speeds it up a little bit but this was before i reached uh level 50 in the xfinity path in the xfinity path 
and this was actually a pack opening that I did before the game so uh, it's a little bit out of order but at the same time I wanted to include it because I mean anytime I spend stubs on packs I want to show you guys the result but five packs left so far nothing but bronzes I don't even know if we pulled a silver yet but anyway I mean some of these bronze cards are not bad like if you pull a Fernando Tatis Jr. who just came out into the game yesterday with the roster update then he's going for a few thousand stubs as well so doing some exchanges with with uh, comments to bronzes or bronze to silvers trying to get those new cards when they come out into the game for collections or or whatever the case is might not be a bad strategy to make some stubs I had been flipping a couple cards on the market and I was able to make a few thousand stubs just in a uh, free time while I was doing some homework and I mean that that helps when I was purchasing some of these packs because packs are a little bit more expensive but so far nothing really except for this guaranteed gold player and I got Marcelo Zuna this is what I was talking about earlier this was from the XP reward path and just from leveling up I also have this audio pack which is gonna give me a variety of audio sounds I usually just sell these even though it says no sell I just quick sell them for the stubs because I don't really care too much about using those stadium sounds but here we get a, a gold pack that's gonna I'm gonna pick the one that just sells for the most in that chest protector I feel like a lot of people are going for the catcher one so I went I just sold it quick sold it probably could have got a few hundred, hundred more stubs if I would have listed it on the market but that's the thing I mean every stub counts in this one I was just trying to save time while I was do in, doing in this video I figured I would just quick sell them but when I'm when I'm going through my inventory I usually just put everything up on the market this early in the season you should be able to sell the stuff because people are buying it for collections but I went ahead and spent the rest of the packs I, I spent the rest of the stubs I had on packs anyway bought another 10 bundle I'm hoping to pull somebody good I, I really want to pull somebody that is going for a large amount of stubs hopefully like a Mookie Betts or somebody that's going for you know 50,000 80,000 stubs that'd be awesome but at the same time I'm looking to just I'm looking to make a pack opening video I've only uploaded one other pack opening or two other pack openings but I figured I would go for it and there we got a gold card Walker Bueller who is pretty pretty effective gold pitcher if, if I must say so myself he doesn't have a uh, he doesn't really have a change up or anything but he definitely has some good off-speed pitches like that knuckle curve and that slider um, I went ahead and sold this one because I already had one in my rotation I went ahead and sold him on the market though because he was going for around 2k normally I'll just quick sell the the golds if they're going for around a thousand just because I don't want to wait I'll just take the 10 stub hit or 100 stub hit and just quick sell them only a couple packs left we do have that silver pack which I have seen someone pull a diamond from and there we go we got a diamond out of this pack so last standard pack of the bundle and it's a good thing I bought this 10 pack bundle or else I would have lost a lot of stubs but here we go 853 strikeouts he's got some holds who is this Andrew Miller I see the Cardinals yeah it's got to be Andrew Miller Andrew Miller with the holds as a relief pitcher it has to be there's no other uh, Cardinals diamond except for Paul Goldschmidt so it is indeed Andrew Miller and definitely a good card I think uh this is a different card art than what he has now to be honest with you because I went when I sold him on the market I sold him and picked up Javier Baez then I also uh, went through my inventory and uh, sold a couple guys I went ahead and picked up Noah Syndergaard as well I got to level 53 bronze and I picked the Roy Oswalt so this is the team that we're rocking with I exchanged some players for Araldis Chapman I uh, sold Lindor and I I mean this is what I'll have in the next video I just wanted to show you guys a quick team update after the pack opening to catch you guys up but thank you guys so much for watching I'm College Lefty if you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one peace out